Hi, I'm Ivan LaCroix, my wife Sylvie, and this is our bus, named the LaCroix Cruiser. It's a 1995 MCI 102 DL3. It's 45 feet long, eight and a half feet wide, 13 feet tall, and it's got 1.1 million miles on it. So, a uh, nice little happy home for us. Welcome inside our bus and into our living room. Now, we're a slightly older couple than most people in buses and we like our comfort. To do that, we start off with a nice sofa and it's not only a sofa, but it's a recliner as well. It allows us to lounge in comfort. We have a little fireplace in front of us. These two benches serve as benches to sit so we can converse with other people, but they also move over to the table to extend the table benches and to make a, another bed when we have guests over. The other aspect of our living room is we have these beautiful big windows. We don't have a television. Well, we do, sort of. We have a screen that pops down and over on the other side, we have a projector. Gives us a nice big screen without the weight of a television, without blocking the view that a normal television would do. Also in our living room, we have storage all the way down the sides. So they're nice, easy cabinets to get into. They have the little struts to hold them up. And inside the cabinets is our wiring. We don't have any wires in the walls anywhere in the bus. All the wiring is surface mounted in tracks, hidden in places. You don't see it, but it's all in plain sight. The lighting that we have is on a track that we made. And this is also a wiring chase front to back of the bus. We have lighting in here that we can change the color of. We can change the color of that one as well. And we have lighting on this side as well. So we can change the mood inside the bus as we, as we see fit. We have cellular blinds that pop up inside the cabinets and close it off, giving us a nice thermal break as well as blocking the light. So they're full blocking blinds. Our flooring is a heated floor. So we have its vinyl plank flooring and underneath it, we have runs of glycol, keeping us nice and warm in colder weather. In colder weather, in warmer weather, we have a mini split air conditioning. Uh, we have one at the front, one at the back. They also can provide heat if we need to. Everything in the bus is run off of solar. We have a generator. We've been in the bus a year and a half, and it has 49 hours on it. So it's not a generator that's run a lot. We use it mostly for powering our block heater on the engine when we want to start the engine when it's cold outside. Uh, the solar we have, we have 4,100 watts on the roof. We have 21,000 watt hour batteries, which gives us a lot of autonomy. The uh, solar, normally by 9, 10 in the morning, everything is charged up and we can run both mini splits. We can cook anything we want and we're just not running off the batteries. We're running off the solar. Welcome to our kitchen. Our kitchen for us is a very important part of the bus and it takes up a good amount of size. We love to cook, we love to eat, we love to entertain. So we do as much as we can with the kitchen. On this side, we have our main kitchen countertop. The countertop material, the table, everything is acacia, which is a uh, imported hardwood. The drawers are all Ikea. So all the cabinets, all the lower cabinets are Ikea. And the reason we chose Ikea, I'm a cabinet maker by trade. I've been doing cabinets for a number of years. This cost me less than cabinets I can build myself in terms of the materials, the hardware. They have a good warranty. They even warranty it in a bus, which is odd. And the other thing is, this is going down the road. Every mile is an earthquake. You have to build everything in your bus as if it was surviving an earthquake every day. Even though it's got a nice cushy air ride, still shaking around a little bit. So by having very solid cabinetry, very solid um, drawer slides, etc., gives us a nice layout. The sink, we like the look of the big farmhouse sinks and all that, but they take up a lot of space and they take up a lot of water. So we went with the smallest sink we could that would fit our largest pot. That way, when we do the dishes, we don't use a lot of water trying to fill a big sink. On the other side of the kitchen, we have our dinette table. Seats two very comfortably, it's 36 inches wide. And we can take the benches from the living room, put them here. We have this that slides out, a leaf that drops in, and now we have a 54 inch wide table 
that just happens to go down to make a 54 inch wide bed. So standard size bed for a, a double bed. So if we do have guests over, they have a comfortable place to sleep. The cushions are actually made out of a, a mattress. So they're nice and comfortable as well. And we have storage in the benches. This bench here is our battery bank. So we have 12 138 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're housed in there in a nice metal rack. They're not going anywhere. They're nice and safe. And this one is open storage. Gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of little storage for stuff we don't access every day. Above me, a max fan. We have two in the bus, one here, one in the bathroom. This one serves as a fan while we're cooking. That way we don't have too many uh, fumes inside the bus and also provides great ventilation when, we, when the outside air is a comfortable temperature. Back to the road side of the bus, we have our three burner cooktop, it's propane. We had an induction cooktop, didn't like it. We went back to propane. Yes, we have to carry another fuel, we don't mind. Uh, all the overhead cabinets are flip up with the hinges, so they stay up nicely. And when we're going down the road, they stay locked by themselves. We have a 15 cubic foot refrigerator, it's a household refrigerator. It's well bolted in and it's what's called a counter depth fridge. So it fits through the door, very important for us. Uh, when we bought the bus, it had a fridge in it already that we had to take out through the windshield because it wouldn't fit through the door. Not something we wanted to experience again. And it's an inverter type fridge, meaning the compressor actually never stops. But the maximum it can draw is 2.2 amps. So very efficient, actually more efficient than most 12 volt fridges, even though it's on 110 and we're going through an inverter. So inside our appliance garage, we have the microwave, little uh, Breville stove, the coffee maker, the Ninja air fryer, and the Berkey. Everybody has to have a Berkey in a bus. Uh, up here, we have just additional storage. We don't have any uh, little appliances that fit up there. So just additional storage there. We have our thermostat here that controls the heating system. So we have, as I mentioned before, in-floor heating. And also we have little heat exchangers throughout the bus that are controlled in the thermostat for the front area of the bus. We have four zones, four thermostatically controlled zones, so we can zone the temperature as we wish. Under here, again, large drawers that are full length. And something that we forgot in our first two buses was a place to put the garbage. So now we have a place to put the garbage and the recycling. The backsplash is peel and stick tiles. Looks like glass, looks like metal, but just peel and stick tiles, really light, easy to change. And the day that we don't like the look of this, peel them off, start over again. Here we have a pull out pantry. So we have six drawers here that work as a pantry with all sorts of goodies in them. So that's what we found to be more than enough for us. The reason we decided to live tiny was actually a change in career. I was working for a company in Memphis, Tennessee, and one year I accumulated 200 hotel cards, which was a very difficult situation for a couple to live. I was always gone. Sylvie was running our business in Quebec, and uh, it was not a fun time. Spoke to the owner of the company, said, look, I have a tour bus. Why don't I use it as a tour bus? And that way Sylvie was able to come with me. We sold our business. And that's when we started full-time on the road. The, the transition from home to bus was actually very simple. We've been part-timing in the bus for a little while. Uh, we had a, about a 2,000 square foot house. So downsizing that aspect to the 320 square foot of the bus was a little uh, challenging. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll put it that way. So we had a storage locker for a while. And when you go back to the storage locker, you realize I haven't needed this stuff in six months. Why do I need it? So the full time in the bus has allowed us to minimize our footprint in the world. And at the same time, it's a lot simpler life. It's more fun. It's more relaxing. Uh, we don't have to worry about maintaining a house. We don't have to worry about snow plowing. We don't have to worry about cutting the lawn. We don't have to worry about taxes and heating and all that. Everything is self-contained in the bus. Wherever we park is home. When the blinds are down, we're home. Some mornings we wake up in a Walmart parking lot, some mornings we wake up beside a lake, and some mornings we wake up in an industrial complex. It doesn't really matter, we're home anyways. Welcome to our bathroom. In our bathroom, 
it's actually quite a big room in the bus. It's eight feet by eight feet. So uh, we didn't spare the, the space in the bathroom. We wanted to be comfortable for one. Second, we don't have an aisleway. So the bathroom in itself is the aisleway to get to the bedroom. Since it's just the two of us in the bus, privacy really isn't a big concern. So we have the door here to close off the front half of the bus, but between the bedroom and the bathroom, there's no door. Uh, we went with a flush toilet. We have a 135 gallon wastewater tank and we don't have a gray or black tank. We have a combined waste tank. That allows us for easy flushing out of the tank. Uh, there's never any blockages, things like that. And we have 125 gallons of fresh water, meaning that we have a little extra buffer there that uh, we'll never overfill our, our waste tank. If we run out of water, it's time to empty the other one. So when one is full, the other one's empty. When one is empty, the other one's full. Also in the bathroom, continuing the theme, lots of storage. We have space for a lot of stuff at the top and the bottom. We have a uh, nice little surface mounted sink. We found it at Menards, great little store. Uh, if you're in the Midwest, my favorite hardware store. On this side, we have a 36 inch shower, big enough to get in, to move around, not hitting the walls all the time as you're trying to rinse off. We have a low flow shower head, so we're not using a lot of water. Our 125 gallons of fresh water gives us between two and three weeks of autonomy. So very easy to go and boondock for two weeks and not have to worry about the water, not have to worry about the waste tank. And then as we're driving by a place that has a waste tank, they always have the fill. And we don't drink from the tank. We have the Berkey for that. So we don't have to worry about the quality of the water too much. Other things about our bathroom, it looks like ceramic tile. It feels like ceramic tile, but it's vinyl tiles. They're made by Armstrong. They're an industrial flooring tile. Uh, they, they require grout. They're glued just like a ceramic tile, but they're flexible. So we never had a problem. We've had the same tiles in our previous bus and never had any issues with one coming off, one moving. Uh, the grout stays, it's a flexible grout, so it doesn't move around either. And here we have a combined washer dryer. We don't use it much, but when we need it, it's fun to have. Above is the electrical nerve center of the bus and below a place for dirty laundry. Again, something we missed in our previous buses. We didn't have a place for the garbage can really, and we didn't have a place for dirty laundry. Now we have a place for the dirty laundry. Above here we have our control that tells us what's happening with our batteries percentage wise. Our solar is divided into four separate groups on the roof with four separate charge controllers. So we know what each one is doing. And we have two 4,000 watt inverters. The two 4,000 watt inverters each have their own controller. Welcome to my office that also happens to be our bedroom. This table folds up and this Murphy bed folds down, but allows me to record videos for my, uh, one of our YouTube channels. And at the same time, place to work. It's wide enough that we can both work on it if we need to. On the floor, you'll notice the square that's limited by the aluminum there. That is for engine access. And a lot of times in a rear engine coach, people forget to leave the engine access. When we bought this bus, that was not accessible. When we bought our previous bus, it wasn't accessible. We left it very accessible. And the closet as well, the doors, we can lift off and take them off. And there's another engine access here and there. So we have great access to the engine if we need it. Hopefully we never do. Contrary to most couples, I'm the one with all the clothes, not Sylvie. I wear, I wear suits all the time, so we have suits and shirts and stuff in here. Uh, the closet is the part of the bus we haven't really finished yet. We haven't decided what we're doing with it, so we don't have shelving, we don't have fun stuff in there yet. We just have a rod and we're hanging the clothes for now. We have a second mini split in the bedroom. This way, when we need to conserve power, we can zone the front or the back and just cool here when we're working or sleeping in the bedroom, and we don't need to cool this the rest of the time. As far as heat, we have our own heat exchanger and thermostat in this room. So our hydronic heating system provides the heat when we need to, or for on solar power and it's not that cold out, we can just use the mini split for heat. Other than the closet, these two columns on either side provide storage. So we have storage for our clothing. And in the center here is actually our night table. So when we put the bed down, you'll see that this is access from the side. It's our little night table. Put the bed down, we have a leg that flips up. Now it's time to go to bed. Front part of the bus, well, the driver and the passenger seat. 
Both important, we switch off driving every two hours or so. That way we're both relaxed, comfortable, and some days we drive quite a long distance, so it allows us to be comfortable. And when I'm uh, doing consulting on the phone, I can sit quietly, put my earphones in, and I can talk to my customers as Sylvia's driving and vice versa. This behind the driver is our coat closet. And inside of here we have hooks, we can hang our coats, we have a nice space to keep them, they're not laying around the bus when we're coming in and out. The rest of this is factory from MCI. And the factory gauges from MCI are basically in dark little holes that we don't see the gauges. So we have a, an additional gauge system called the Blue Fire that is connected to the ECM of the bus and it tells us everything we need to go need to know going down the road and we just go through our phone we just put the phone there and it gives us all the important gauges and warnings should something be awry we also have power blinds for privacy that come down we've positioned our rear view camera to act as a rear view mirror so the camera is always on as we're driving and it's in a location that's natural for a driver to look up to it's where the rear view mirror is in our car so it's a natural position to look up to. The radio system, we've done something a little differently. It's an Apple CarPlay, we use iPhones, but it's also Android. What this does, uh, the switches here, allow us to zone the speakers to where we want. So the driver has four speakers, the passenger has four speakers. We can switch it to have four speakers around the living room, so a surround sound for the TV. We have speakers in the bedroom and speakers outside in the basement. That way we can put the sound where we want to and have it comfortable. So when Sylvia is driving, I'm talking on the phone, she's listening to her music and I can quietly talk on the phone. There's enough separation there to make it comfortable. Another very important part of owning a bus is a tire pressure monitoring system. It saved our life a couple times. So we have a TST tire pressure monitoring system on all our wheels, including the little Fiat that we tow behind. So Sylvia and I teach detailers how to be entrepreneurs. And detailers, automotive detailing, they're very passionate about what they do. They're, they love making cars shiny and look great and look new again. Unfortunately, they're not great business people. So our goal now that we're semi-retired is to go around, teach them how to be entrepreneurs, how to make their lives easier, better, and more balanced. And so one day they can retire in their 50s as well. The other aspect, uh, we have a couple YouTube channels. We have one that's called the Detailers Business Academy, again, to transfer them from detailer to entrepreneur. And the one we have the more fun with, though, is LaCroix Cruiser. So the whole build of this bus, we chronicled from day one, from buying it to driving it from Arizona back to Quebec, everything has been done, explained in English and in French on our YouTube channel, LaCroix Cruiser. One of the nice things about a coach is all the under base storage. Now for us, as we mentioned before, we love to cook and outside is no different than inside. So we have this nice little slide out here and on it we have a barbecue, a griddle. The engineering isn't quite finished on it. Uh, the struts aren't strong enough, so we need different struts. So these are both propane, it puts it up at a nice height and gives us a nice, easy to cook on surface. We also have a smoker that pulls out but the smoker we like to keep further away from the bus so we don't use it here we pull it away from the bus because if our awning is open the smoker uh, underneath the awning is not a good situation next door down more storage and all our electrical system so the electrical system is down here we have our two 4000 watt inverters we have a sterling dc to dc charger all our fuses our breakers our charge controllers they're all on this wall making it nice and easy to get to, easy to understand as well. All the wiring is simple to find, locate, and understand. On the ceiling of this, we have four 40 amp MPPT charge controllers. On this side of the electrical bay, we have our two breaker panels. One is controlled by the inverters. The other one is controlled by the shore power cord. And this is our shore power cord. You'll notice it's a little short. We have an extension cord that we plug in, should we be plugged into shore power somewhere, which is rare for us. This plug is what our generator drives, so we don't need a transfer switch. We're either plugged in to the generator, 
or we're plugged into our shore cord, which we can put out through this hole here. So very simple, nothing to break down, nothing to go wrong. You're either plugged in one place or the other. So the bus has a main power switch that we turn off every time we stop the bus that uh, keeps the, the main batteries from going down, has nothing to do with the electrical system of the house. The two, sep the two are very separated. The only thing that can control them or connect them together is the DC to DC charger. Other than that, there's nothing that connects them together. Last bay on this side is our toolbox. So we like to carry many tools with us, supplies, screws. The reason it slides out behind it is our generator. So we can pull it out 30 inches and get to the generator behind it. The generator is in its own box, completely insulated. So it doesn't make a lot of noise. These two pipes here are our exhaust system for our Oasis heating system and the generator. And they go up through the bus and out through the roof. Other little thing that's in here, and we have them scattered throughout the bus, is these fire extinguishers, they're element fire extinguishers. This one will actually last 50 seconds. So this will outlast a 10 pound big container, weighs basically nothing, and they store a lot easier. Last door on the curb side of the bus, we have our second mini split unit. This is the one for the bedroom, and it's on a swivel that we can move it out to get, have access to the engine, just like the factory intended. Here we have our little engine that could, 12.7 liter Detroit diesel series 60, and radiator on one side, intercooler on the other side. Very simple engine in terms of diesel engines, easy to maintain, they have a long life. This one only has 1.1 million miles on it, so we're good to go for a long time still. The whole bus is covered in bed liner, and it's SEM Protex bed liner. Uh, it's the third bus we've done with it, and we've done another one afterwards for friends. It's a very durable finish, easy to maintain, easy to keep clean. We can scratch up beside a branch, here it scratched down the whole length of the bus, and just smile. Keep driving. We don't have to worry about it scratching. We teach automotive detailing for a living and if this were painted with regular paint we'd be polishing it eh, probably every day and waxing it and keeping it clean whereas this we can go six months without washing it and still looks good. So it's a, a very good bonus for us because our OCD would take over uh, if we didn't have the bed liner finish and we had a regular paint. On this side more engine access. We have the muffler, the turbo is accessible through there. We have a junction box that's here for electrical and the air filter. This is the other side of the bay with the toolbox, and this is where we keep our tools for teaching detailing. Also in this bay, we have our 125 gallon water fresh tank, 135 gallon waste tank, our generator, our Oasis heating system, and uh, this is an insulated and heated bay. So our water, we don't have to worry about it freezing. It has its own thermostat, its own heater. It stays at roughly 50 degrees, so we don't have to worry about our detailing chemicals freezing either. Our water heater is located here. It's a propane electric Atwood water heater, which has a, a nice little feature to it. If you put it, <clears throat> if you turn on both the propane and the electrical, it becomes an instant hot water heater. So it houses 10 gallons, which when we, uh, if we wanted to use a lot more water in 10 gallons, which we haven't, but if we wanted to, we could turn both the electrical on through either the generator or shore power and the propane and get instant hot water from. Here we have the mini split for our living room and our two propane tanks. Propane tanks, the regulator is there and they feed the barbecue, the cooktop and the water heater. This is the other side of our fun bay where we have the barbecue and everything. We ride recumbent trikes. So the two recumbent trikes are folded in here. Uh, we have an auxiliary compressor should we ever need it and some spare oil, antifreeze, things like that. This is the door you never want to open. Uh, this is the electrical system, the factory electrical system of the bus. It looks really complicated, but it's actually quite simple once you follow it through. And MCI has spectacular customer support. We can call them 24 seven, stuck on the side of the road. Even though the bus is almost 30 years old, we get roadside assistance and we have tech help that will help us through this. We had a problem recently with a blown fuse that we tried to locate the fuse. Through their tech help, we we're able to locate the fuse and get back on the road quite easily. So this is the bus electrical system. Like I said, it's the door you don't want to have to open. In the bottom, we have our air horns, always fun. Uh, when we get that little car cutting us off and trying to brake check us. The other thing is we have a five gallon windshield washer fluid reservoir. We keep our grease gun here, 
uh, to keep the chassis lubed up and make sure everything is working the way it should. This is a D model bus, a 102 DL3, but you'll notice the front end is not from a DL3 if you know MCI buses. At some point in its life, it had an update kit to make it look like an E. So it has the headlights from an E and the front cap from an E to make it look like an E. It's also had a 10 inch roof raise, which was done uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when they, convert, when they first converted it to an RV. So this is a fiberglass piece that is over the factory piece. We have our name etched in stainless steel and our logo that was designed by Nat Silver. So the name LaCroix Cruiser. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook under that name. If you're building a bus, consider safety. Uh, we go to a lot of bus events and we see some buses that safety really isn't a major concern. They have a lot of loose things in the bus. They have heavy weights uh, like wood stoves, things like that, that aren't properly secured. And you have to think of the G-forces involved if you're ever in an accident. You have to think that this bus is basically surviving an earthquake every mile that it's going down the road. So everything needs to be built solidly and with that in mind. Now, a lot of people say a bus is a lot safer than an RV and 100% there. But unfortunately, some of the interior builds are not that safe. The other things with the bus, uh, do not, please, do not skimp on insulation. It's probably the most important part of the build. It's what's gonna keep you comfortable. Whether you're living in a hot climate or a cold climate, insulation is what allows you to stay heated comfortably, safely, and without spending a lot of money on electricity or diesel or whatever heating system you choose. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, you can see more tiny home tours and you can actually see the tour of our previous bus on this channel. They'll probably put a link somewhere. Uh, so it's on this channel as well. That was our previous bus. The other aspect of this, you can follow us on our social media. So like I said, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, we're there. The whole build has been chronicled on Facebook. And now that we're living in and traveling, we're gonna to continue to chronicle that. And there's always little updates and changes to our bus. So follow along.